Gary, what's up, my buddy? Oh, uh, Jesse, what are you doing here? Oh, you didn't know. You're uh, taping the show out of your house today. My house? Oh, no, that can't be right. Uh, no, I, I'm not ready at all. We don't even have any guests booked. I thought, I thought the show was on hold for this week. No, no, remember, you're taping the Christmas special coming up. It's going to air oh. soon, so the studio's booked. And buddy, you're doing the show right here out of your kitchen. Oh, I, you brought the, oh, no, you brought the stuff and everything. We got you all geared up here, buddy. We got your telephone. We got your custom Gary mugs. Man, we got to do this right now. You're on the spot, but I know you have it in you, Gary. I think so. I guess we're ready. Roll the opening theme. <laughs> You better stay away The beautiful young maids all around the bay My next conquest was the queen of the town You barely see past the shine of her crown My mother said so she's gonna bring you down My heart was broke by the queen of the town I tried my hand in love and it didn't work out But there's really no point in talking about Foolish times when I was a lad Trying to take the daughters and move for the land I tried my hand in love and it didn't work out But there's really no point in talking about Foolish times when I was a lad Trying to take the daughters and move for the land Mary and Dave, thank you so much for joining me here this morning. Thank you for having us, yes. Gary. Yeah, Gary, it's mm. great. So, uh, first of all, before we get into the details on your new show, uh, I'd love to hear how the two of you met and decided you wanted to collaborate on this project. Mm. Mm. Well, mm. Dave, I think the, the, the actual, we, we met before, of course, because we live mm -hmm. in St. John's, and so everybody in St. John's yes. is like, either already met, you know, or is related in some way. So uh, so I knew Dave, of course, because he was part of that brilliant comedy team, um, uh, you, you know, Newfoundland Dance Party. But I saw, D Dave's on my Facebook page, yeah. and I saw some stuff he'd written on, on about, uh, you know, uh, the, it, 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 in fact, it was titled The Mrs. Downstairs, and I wrote him, and I said, you know, Dave, I was born to play the Mrs. Downstairs, and, and you were born to play you. We should get together. So we got together and had lunch, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, and then by lucky happenstance, I was going out to have a coffee with Ruth, um, Ruth uh, Lawrence to mm -hmm. raise money. For, uh, we were going to do a fundraiser for the Actors Fund, okay. and uh, she mentioned that she was doing this stuff with five, and I thought, ding, ding. Is that the way your mind goes? No. 
Mine more go. Mine kind of goes meh, like mine meh, like a foghorn. Oh, okay, yeah. My yeah. mine, mine did something. I thought this would be perfect for me and Dave because we want to do this because we love it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and um, and so this is uh, you know a way to do it. And so uh, Ruth got us a meeting with Paul Gardner at mm-hmm. five, and then the rest we we wrote together. We used almost all of Dave's stuff from Facebook. I would say. And, and then we kind of structured it a bit. I added a few stories of my own, and uh, on we go. And then we we that's yeah. That, I'm going on too long now, Gary. You only asked me how we met. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's all right, Gary. I'm on with Gary. Yes. <laughs> Gary seems pretty pleasant. Yeah. yeah. No, Gary's pleasant. Gary, yeah. can I ask you a question? Oh, well, no, sure. I guess so. What's it like being a puppet? What's it like being a puppet? Huh. Like, how do you clean yourself? Do you use a lint roller, or is that too painful? Uh, usually, usually, yeah. unless there's a bigger mess. Because you're mainly lint. Mm-hmm, right? pretty much. Fleece. I just, just, I've seen you on TV. Fleece, fleece. Yes. yeah, fleece. fleece. fleece yes. nice. Not lint, no. fleece, well, Dave. Yeah. Has, doesn't fleece have lint? Not usually, no. no. Like, yeah. more wool and cotton has yeah. lint, but fleece is, you know, pretty lint, fle- f- flea. <laughs> Fine, a snack break. Yes. That's fine. Mm-hmm. So, of course, your new show, Mrs. Downstairs, was obviously filmed here in our beautiful province. And uh, we've also seen quite an uptake in lots of other productions getting made here. You know, we have shows like Hudson and Rex, and uh, Disney was here, of course, this past summer, filming their live-action Peter Pan remake. So, what do you think it is that draws all these big productions into our province? Cheap labor. No, I'm just joking. Uh, uh, and, and extraordinary vistas yeah, and all that. Yeah. And cheap labor, too. Probably of course, cheap. I mean, Americans coming here are getting, uh, you know, uh, the American dollar is worth more than the Canadian dollar, and Canadians aren't normally paid as highly as, you know, Americans are. Yeah. And so there is that factor. And and also the brilliant way that the people in charge dealt with COVID this year. Yes. And, uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, an unsullied and beautiful um, actual physical physical space, as Mm -hmm. Dave knows, because you know Dave is the man who did a lot of that work of making people who were in Newfoundland already wish that they lived in Newfoundland because he did those Newfoundland tours that, like you look at him and think, gee, I wish I lived there. Oh, oh, I I do. I do live here. I sometimes look at it and go, I wish I lived. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think it's, yeah, it's the exotic nature of the place, I think Mm -hmm. is what it is, right? And like, you'd have to go pretty far to get a place like that. You'd have to go to Norway or you'd have to go to an Iceland. Yeah. And we kind of have all of that here. And it's, you know, a pretty short flight, really, mm-hmm. from wherever you are. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your show and uh, what people can expect if they tune in? Um, I think, uh, like Mary said, I mean, this all kind of stemmed from uh, some stories on Facebook. I, mm-hmm. I moved out to the Cove, uh, Portugal Cove. And uh, I moved into a place, and there was a lovely lady living downstairs uh, who is the exact opposite of Mary. I have to stress that. Oh yeah, no, Mary's I Mary. met her, and I thought, oh no, I'm not anything like oh, the Mrs. Downstairs. Such a no, she's a yeah. darling. But, but Dave wasn't expecting her to live down there. He thought he had the whole house to himself, right. and he was living the dream of being out with an ocean view and everything. Yeah, it was like and Melville. It was, <laughs> and it was sort of like. A bit of a shock, shall we say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and so I started writing these stories, and like Mary said, she picked up on it online, and like a bunch of people started following it, and uh, so people can just sort of expect like sort of what happened in real life is like this budding friendship that you would never really expect yes. uh, to to see uh, and develop, and that's exactly kind of what happens in the show, just a bit more. Uh, gasoline added to the fire, you could say. I'm a bit more mean, like my mother, (laughs) than actually Dave's friend, who is just the sweetest woman. Uh, But, you know, there's not... I can't... uh, I kind of can't stop that other underneathy thing. But you're not mean. You're not no, mean at all. No, no. Like, we just live two completely different existences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm a little bit mean every now and again. Well. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all in good fun, Gary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, we are going to take a very short break here now, but uh, folks at home, please stay with us. We'll be right back with more from Mary Walsh and Dave Sullivan right after this.
Welcome back to NL Now on NTV. If you're just joining us, I'm here with Mary Walsh and Dave Sullivan. So, of course, thank you again for joining me here today. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Carrie. Glad to be here again. Yes. Now, uh, I want to go back, uh, farther back, I guess, to mm -hmm. ask if you could tell me just a little bit about how you first realized you wanted to be in the television and comedy industry. Well, I really couldn't do anything else back then. Uh, I've since moved on to do other stuff, but mm -hmm. back then uh, it seemed like, I guess I was in high school, I was at Bishop's College, and uh, I wanted to be in plays, but I couldn't get cast in any plays. <laughs> Nobody would put me in the play. So I started doing my own plays, uh, and uh, I started my own theater company when I was 17, and I started directing shows at the LSPU Hall and casting myself <laughs> as the lead, uh, which was very humble. Uh, but that's, that's sort of what happened, and then eventually I met up with Steve Cochran, who is a, a comedian and a writer uh, from here, and we formed a sketch comedy group when I was 17, or 18, um, called uh, Cracked. I think it was called, and uh, we did a bunch of shows, and uh, yeah, it sort of started from there. Mm -hmm. And then started a, a sketch group and called Dance Party in Newfoundland years later, and we toured all over the place, all over Canada and through the States, and uh, did lots of shows here. It was lots of fun. Yeah. How about you, Mary? Well, you know, I really wanted to be a journalist. I didn't really want to be in comedy, but I got, I was really depressed, and I got a job on CBC Radio because I went down and I was so sure I would never get it. I was watching Coronation Street and they said they were looking for a, an announce operator. I went down, I was so sure I didn't get it, wasn't going to get it, that I got it. And then, of course, it was a complete disaster and the only, the only people who wrote said, who is the mad giggler on from 10 to 11? That was me. But in the meantime, somebody had heard my voice on the radio and wanted me to be part of this play that was going on in the basement. So I got in with a crowd, mm -hmm. and then the crowd were going off to Toronto to look for work, and I thought, um, oh, I didn't have good enough, you know, marks or anything to get into journalism school, but I thought I, and I auditioned for Ryerson to get into theater school, and I, all the teachers had to come up and hold my hand, that's how nervous I was. And anyway, I was living with Tommy Sexton and Diane Olson and Kathy Jones and all the Cod Coast, and they got some money from Theater Pass Mariah to write their own show, and I did it with them, but then I had to quit because at the theater school they said you couldn't be in theater if you were going to go to the theater school. Oh, yeah. So I quit and got a job at a place called Cock Door where you had to serve people, and I was so bad at that I lost that job within a week they asked me to uh, leave. And and uh, then everybody, uh, I thought, well, if there's nothing else for me to do, uh, you know. And I, so we got to do this tour of Newfoundland as Codco with a show called Cod and a Stick. And so I did it all the time, hoping and wishing and praying that I would become a journalist. Uh, but stuck with that crowd. And, uh, and, and then we did that and we kept on going. And um, lucky for me. Uh, but then later on I had an idea to do this news show. Uh, first at the hall, I thought we'd do it at the hall, but then it ended up being on uh, national TV uh, called uh, This Hour's 22 Minutes, where I got to be a comedian and pretend to be a journalist. So all my dreams were fulfilled. It's amazing. <laughs> Can I just say that the very first play that I directed uh, in that theater company was Caught on a Stick? Ah! Mm -hmm. See, it was yes. meant to be! Yes, it was. <laughs> So uh, we're going to do something now that I like to do with all of my guests on the show. We're going to play a little game, sort of, called Get to Know Me. So I'll ask you five questions and you'll come back with the first thing that pops into your head. Gary, this is dangerous, Gary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off easy. Favorite color? Blue. Red. Your favorite food? Macaroni and cheese. Oh, uh, you know, meat and gravy. Mm -hmm. Meat and gravy? <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> Your favorite song to sing out loud to when you're alone in the car. <laughs> oh. oh, that's uh. Oh, uh, uh, that's, boy, there's a lot. Uh, uh, House of Love uh, by Amy, what's her name, who became a Christian singer after. Uh, probably Thong Song by Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The favorite role you've played. Hmm. Uh. Hamlet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Favorite role I've played. Mm, I, 
I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I played a little bit, tiny bit of Lear uh, with that Daniel Irvine thing. And I really must say I enjoyed that, though. It was quite terrifying. And I'd like to do that again. So my, I always think, you know, I always think my favorite role is ahead of me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And if you could collaborate with any actor, actress, or writer on a project, who would you pick and why? Uh, there you go. It's Mary Walsh. Yes. That's it's the Dave Sullivan. I think it'd be very fun to work with Mary Walsh <laughs> and Dave Sullivan. Mm -hmm. It is. It Pretty is. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for coming in today. This has been so much fun. Now, Derek, it's been great. I've never actually spoken with a like a puppet before. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I'm gonna do it more. Oh, well, no, me you. too. I love a puppet. Yeah. As who doesn't? You know, they're not scary yeah. like clowns. It's not like being oh. injured by a clown. Or people. Or people. Or people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> thank you, Gary. Thank you. I am here now with. Kitchen party, how are you all doing today? Good. Great, Gary. Yeah, right. Well, it's very us. great to have you here. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> no Thank problem. You. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, first of all, I wanted to talk to you about your recent Music NL nomination. So, uh, why don't you first start off by uh, telling our audience, for those who may not know, uh, which awards you are nominated for. So, Gary, we're nominated for three Music NL awards, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Well, yes. For each of us. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, <hopefully. laughs> we're nominated for the Celtic Traditional Group of the Year, mm -hmm. uh, the Group of the Year, yes. and also the Rising Star Award. Oh, All right. Well, that's great. So, uh, how did you guys first form as a group and start performing together? Yeah, well, me and Terry Lynn, our brother and sister, mm -hmm. and our whole family throughout the years have been... Uh, have been musically inclined, and every yes. everything that we do is a major kitchen party, if you mm -hmm. if you will. It's <laughs> <laughs> name. And uh, so we just grew up around music, and then her and Justin started dating about what was that, like twenty two years ago. A long time okay. ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're still having first dates. <laughs> so it's all good. But uh, no, and then Justin obviously is very musically inclined too, and became. Uh, became part of the family pretty quickly and then we all decided to form a little group once I started playing guitar. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so now I hear you guys have a Christmas song of your own coming out soon. Would you like to chat about that? Yeah, it's a little tune that I've been playing with the Irish Descendants and the Navigators for, uh, for our Celtic mm -hmm. Christmas tour. And uh, yeah, it's a little tune called Snoopy's Christmas. We're so excited. We had Aaron Collis come in and Peter Green was working on it with us. And uh, we're just super excited to put it out there and uh, to hear what everybody thinks. Yes, that's great. We'll have to have you back next year for our Christmas special. Yes, yes. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, before we go, is there anything else coming up over the next year? Any new projects or anything you might be working on you'd like to mention? Yeah, we're actually in the process of recording a brand new album, mm -hmm. so we're starting to currently collect poems and uh, old songs from Flat Rock, and hopefully that'll be the the main point of our album, to tell the stories of where we're from, so yeah, keep an eye great. out! Yes, I will. <laughs> well, uh, once again, thank you all so much for coming in today and chatting with me. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Gary. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, stay right there. Coming up a little later on in the show, we've got another song from Kitchen Party. <laughs> <laughs> Here now, once again, to close out the show, Kitchen Party. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> All right. All right. My head hurts, my wallet's worse, I scarce know what to do. The weekend's almost over, though all this it's hardly new. The time is almost worth it, my life's a constant fight. It's cause of this that I am now a victim of last night. The jog had started, six o'clock was just me and the lads. I picked up a dozen beer and two six for a laugh. The boys were in Sad Wall was passed out on the couch I don't know where he found the kid The food was all scared down by now And we were nice and primed So up the George Street we all went with women on our mind My head hurts, my wallet's worse I scarce know what to do The weekend's almost over And all this is hardly new The time is almost worth it My life's a constant fight It's cause of this that I am now a victim Hey, 
vacation, a maid and I, it's fine. We gorgeous locks and ginger hair that twinkle on her eyes. But then when I approached her, I had to say, who's next? For once I saw her face, so close she revealed to be my ex. My head hurts, my wallet's worse, I scarce know what to do. The weekend's almost over, the all this is hardly new. The time is almost worth it, my life's a constant fight. It's cause of this that I am now a victim of last night. Well, the night is finally over, and the sun is coming up. I realize that all this fun is just not for the fuss. To drink until it's laid out, and suffer Sunday's pain. But somehow come next Saturday, I'm back at it again. My wallet's worse, I scarce know what to do The weekend's almost over, and all this is hardly new The time is almost worth it, my life's a constant fight It's cause of this that I am now a victim of last night Cause of this that I am now a victim of last night hey! This certainly was an interesting show, wasn't it? Well, you gotta be in the present moment. Life mm -hmm. throws you curveballs and you just go with the flow. <laughs> that is right for sure, Well, and uh, Thank you so much for dropping by anyways. I know about all the challenges of hosting a local talk show. I've been doing my meetings with remarkable people for 20 years now, so mm -hmm. you are very good at what you do, Gary. Well, thank you. So uh, when can people see your meetings with remarkable people? It actually airs on NTV, Canada's Superstation, every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Newfoundland time. As you know, we got our own time zone yes. here. <laughs> well, that's great. And uh, thank you folks at home for watching the show today. We'll see you next week, Saturday morning, 10.30 a.m. Newfoundland time for the NL Now Christmas special. See you next week. Can't wait. Merry Christmas. <laughs>